Hi there and welcome to another insightful edition of African Student Voices on AU TV. We're coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Investors. And I'm your host, Ajibono Chudako. You can watch us on our social media platforms on AU underscore 67 on Twitter or Association of African Investors on Facebook and YouTube. You can also visit our dedicated website, tv.au.org, for much more of our content. Today we're discussing the gaps between academia and industry. I know this is a long-weighted topic and you all have views about it. But before I tell you who I have in my studio today, stay tuned and we'll be right back. This is Africa's most friendly nation, Ghana. A warm reception awaits you in an environment where you can discover and harness your full potential. Your home is an academic haven lying northeast of the city center, a quick dash from the airport. A spirited community where young, vibrant minds are empowered to express themselves, break academic boundaries, and thrive in an atmosphere of rich cultural heritage and excellence in various collegiate and extracurricular activities. This institution represents a whole new world of fun and offers you a variety of activities, facilities and services geared towards your total development. Believing in the uniqueness of all our students, we encourage them to pursue excellence in integrity. Welcome to the University of Ghana, your preferred academic destination. You're welcome back. And if you just joined us, it is African Student Voices on AAU TV. I'm your host, Ajibwa Chudako. And today, we're discussing the gaps between academia and industry. And we'll be in the studio as Dr. Dr. James Doku. Yeah, he's a lecturer at the University of Professional Studies and Research Methods. And I also have Otre Dako Sapon from the University of Ghana He's a, a, a fortune student in theater. theater art. And I have Kofi Ose Yabua, also a national uh, personnel at the University of, of professional UPSA, studies. yeah, in the School of Garden Studies. Uh -huh. So, gentlemen, you're all welcome to Thank you. my Thank show. You. My show. And I wave you all. Welcome. So, this topic is very important. I mean, it's been discussed over and over again. And we are still mm -hmm. going to talk about it because even though a decade ago we talked about it, we've not seen a difference. So we'll take it from the scratch so our viewers can understand where we're coming from and where we're going. So Kofi, I'll begin with you. Okay. What do we mean when we say industry in the first place? Okay, in the first place, greetings to all your viewers. Thank you. When you talk about industry, then we are talking about the community whereby they use their skills sure. produced by the academia, you get it? and then utilize it to bring an outcome, you get it? As well as talking about efficient manner of how these resources are being used and also to reduce costs as well. So the, uh, the industry also thinks about motivation, you get it? Uh, they motivate and also bring innovations sure. and initiatives to, to actually cause work done. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so Sapon, tell us about academia as a different community. What is it about? Okay, so I'll use this word as I said, community. Academia is a society that educates people or students ready for the job market and ready for his definition. That is academia for me. Okay, so we'll now come to Doug to give us a bit of two. Academia and industry. Academia deals with curricula, industry also deals with uh, job skills and how they can transform them to solve problems. Who is the brain behind the curricular formulation. Thank you, um, thank you to your cherries, viewers, looking at and watching this live. Sure. Um, this issue is very topical to the national development of the economics, yeah. both in the developed countries and in the developing. Um, over and over again, the industry practitioners have cried. Yes. And continues to cry. Yes. Uh, there is a huge mismatch between the skills being produced by the universities yeah. through their curriculum sure. and the industry need or demand by the participants. 
Now, the, the question of who designs, as you said, the curriculum. Yes. The curriculum is being designed consciously. Curriculum, let's, if you will understand, that the curriculum is a set of programs that have been consciously designed, developed by training institutions like universities okay. and other institutions. Design and develop to give a specialized training skills to the human resource to fit not only industry, but anywhere they find themselves. So they are training integrated beings, okay. somebody that can fit anywhere on the group. So instead of programs, who design is, is the responsibility of the regulators. Every academic program to be developed has a regulator to supervise and ensure that the program meets national development. For example, if you come to Ghana, mm -hmm. we have National Council for Tertiary Education. Education, whose mandate, among other things, is to see to the development of new programs. Okay. Of course, he advises government ministers, the Minister for Education on other issues, but they also see to the program development, so to make national development. So the regulator plays a role. The institutions, the universities, the tertiary institutions also play a major role in those development. If I then propose those programs to be run, and then the regulatory body have to see whether it fits into national agenda, which means that curriculum cannot yet be developed okay. from the boom. We just stood up and said, okay, we're going to develop a curriculum. No, it must be a targeted curriculum. It doesn't meet a certain demand. Okay, so Doc, I will, I will also throw back to you before we go to our other guest here. If this is designed by the regulator, dear towards a national agenda. And the institutions. And the institutions who also are the operational front. We have students also being the main raw materials who pass through this channel. And they are the ones who we do this for. If students go to the job field with this training, through by a curriculum uh, deliberately made by the, 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 the regulators, the institutions, and even government. And they are, or they, they are, they are being uh, regarded as that is not what's required, and that you should also come and learn from us on the job and how we do it. And they can testify that there's a difference. Don't you think that students deserve a seat or earn a seat on the planning table? Thank you very much. Students being the intermediary yes. in this kind of industry, academia, right. interface, yes. um, you may argue they deserve a C. But I want that argument, that demand, to be directed to the industry. Okay. That is where they are going. It is the one who needs their service. That determines the usefulness of their service or otherwise. So I will ask that we should listen more to the industry players, what they need so that we develop that skill human resource to meet their needs. Not the student per se, because the programs are structured programs. Okay, so you just fit in. It's just like to say that uh, a flour that you're going to use it to make a bread doesn't determine the kind of machine that you must be used to bake it. <laughs> you just put the flour into the machine, and then you get the end result, which is a bread. The flour cannot determine that, oh, I want this kind of a Japanese machine, mm -hmm. I want this kind of a Chinese machine, or the one built from Turkey, to, so, so that I do know. So I would like the industry players to consciously knock on the doors of the universities to say, this is the shortage we need, this is what we need, and you have to develop your programs to meet it. So um, let me come to you, Sapon. Do, do you say with Doc that you don't need to be on the planning table, but rather you, you just be there and let uh, your, end, your receiver, that is industry, determine what should be added to the flour, if, if, if that's a, a good okay. case, a scenario to use? I would say it's 50-50, mm -hmm. in the sense that the student is the product. You are from the institution. You can't tell how they mold you. Just let them mold you. Now, to the shelf that you are going, they determine, OK, I want this color, I want this color, so please, manufacturer, do it for me like this. So you can't plan for yourself. That's the first 50. Now, on the other 50, I am like, I know I need this particular attribute, and I'm not getting it in this school. So where do I need it? 
you should give it to me. So the school should get, give us a say in our own development. So I believe that's a 50-50 say that we have. So indeed, we need a say in our manufacturing of Let's start from Doc's <laughs> flyer matter. So <laughs> if the flyer could talk, if the flyer could tell the baker, the baker, yes. add less yeast to me yes. and yes. add more flavor to me, it would, it would appeal to because I'm the one who goes to the house of the buyer and he complains that this bread lacks more yeast. Good. So Kofi, what do you think? Should there be a room for students to express their views on what their studies, their disminutes on how the course curriculum is actually being structured, or they shouldn't be that? Ah, thank you very much. In fact, I respectfully disagree with my boss. <laughs> you see, I was saying that uh, I wrote in my article that in Ghana now, mm -hmm. by the time you spend five years in our education system, you're already five years behind your global competitors. Okay. It is a worry. And then he, he talked about a national agenda, yeah. meaning there is a focus. And the academia is to direct us mm -hmm. to meet the demand of the government. Yes. Now, what is the demand of this government? They are focused mainly. You cannot, you cannot uh, take entrepreneurship out of this. But here is a case that I read in the graphic business, the business graphic. I got to realize that a, a survey was conducted in some of the SHS schools in Ghana. And the outcome was that just 2% of these students are interested entrepreneurship. in entrepreneurship. The same interview was conducted, or research was conducted outside. And in UK and USA, we got to realize that 75% of these people are yearning to go at entrepreneurs. Meaning there's a, there's a huge gap. So I think they should direct us. Directing me doesn't mean I don't have anything. It means I have something. something. But you should what? Help me come out with what I have. But now, they don't give us room to bring what we have in us. So we cannot think outside the box. Mm. That is the problem we are facing. And I think we should be part of a decision. Talk. Back to the flour formula. I think it's very good for the setter. <laughs> Look, you've made the bread. Yes. And the bread had what the buyer said, that this bread it lacks that uh, soft texture. So when, luckily, you ask the, the buyer, how was the bread? So it was too hard. So next time, review and add more butter to it. Look, do you think that there have been complaints about the curricular in universities? And has there been any effort to review? Good, thank you. Yes. Um, Yes, the complaints have come from the industry players uh, and not from the students. Okay. So that's where we should look at it. The we, complaint. We can't talk about it. We can't talk about it. So <laughs> yes. Let's, let's about it. <laughs> yes. The complaint have largely come from the one who need the okay. bread, okay. the consumer. Okay. And not the bread itself. Okay. The bread itself will not complain because, mm. as I said, they have little room to express their own. Sure. So, what I want to suggest on their part that they should, there should be that flexibility on their part mm -hmm. to engage themselves in other activities while they are on campus that could enhance their soft skills, which cannot be gotten. For example, we are told that don't focus only on curriculum activities. There are other activities, associations, and other engagements that you can engage yourself in and you add value to yourself because to some of the employers they will tell you that uh, when you bring your cv i don't look at your curriculum i look at when you were in school what other things did you do to yourself community services did you go internship did you do these things those are the things they will look for okay. and see whether you are one step ahead or not so there should be that room i would say there should be that room for them to develop that other skills but when it comes to the development of the curriculum I don't see their significant contribution there because it is a structured program. Okay, so um, <laughs> if you just join us, African Student Voices, and we are on AAU TV, we're discussing the gaps between academia and industry. So stay tuned, we'll be right back.
My name is Rosemary Moza. I'm Justin Ismail, a fourth year student at Salusi University. My name is Alice Inyasianova. I'm from Mozambique. Being at Solis University has been one of the greatest treasures of a lifetime that I will live to cherish. What I've liked the most about this place is the fact that it's out of town and it's surrounded by a natural environment. The first time I came to Solusi, I thought I was going to be lonely, but I was surprised that I found a lot of friends. Solusi is a peculiar institution that seeks to develop a whole being. I enjoy going to church on Sabbath. I really like the fact that out here you are able to commune with your creator, of course, through creation and of course there's also the various spiritual programs which are held, including prayer band. Solusi University instills knowledge that develops mentally, physically, spiritually, academically, you name it. I really like the people around here. Most people are really friendly. I think it's a really good place if you want to grow spiritually. We also have some days for to have fun like a sport day on one of these days was given and I really enjoyed it. Why not come to Solis University? I would like to invite every one of you to come and join us at Solos. This place I hope it will stay with me. Hope you make the right choice. <laughs>
differently from the others for which their products are always in high demand by the industry compared mm -hmm. to the others. One, they impart proper based teaching methodologies. All like the more of the theory, they look at problem based and practical based teaching. So if you are doing a project work, it is problem based. If you are doing community service, it is problem based. So they take them to practical learning approach where emphasis is more on the practicals than the theoretical. And then they interface that one with industry practice where they invite champions in the industry, people you can call successful or successful business incubators, people who have walked through the business arena and you can call them you are successful, you are rich. And they come and give them living testimony, not a theory, living testimony. When they started this business, these were the challenges they faced. This is how they overcame these challenges. So if you are doing the same, this, this. So the student get to feel it and they move with that. It even inspired the student more. The student go and do intensive programs. It is compulsory. And it's not just intensive that they are going to sit down and at the end of the day, somebody write a report that will come to do the job. There is always monitoring. There is always a checkup on them. As to what they were doing, sometimes they even designed a format of their schedule of activities at the web What they must do for them. This is what they are training, they are imparting on their students. That will make them uniquely different. They also mm -hmm. teach them communication skills, mm -hmm. interpersonal interrelationship, how they can talk to people because they are going to the community after school. Who are you going to work? Mm -hmm. They are not going to work in space. Even space, there are human beings there. You sure. work with colleagues. So while you are going to the world of work, you are going to interact with people, how you speak to them, courtesy, and that kind of stuff. But building their confidence, self-confidence level. Wow. And so that will make their students well-rounded. And a product that can fit into any situation. So everybody will be in demand for that. And we have schools in Ghana. We have university in Ghana. That does that. OK. So, Sapon, um we now drew, so we drew a gap right now that now industry admires more of soft skills than the hard skills. You no, know? sure. the course we learn in our lecture halls are all ha ha hardcore <laughs> matters. So that soft skill that we can see, yes. but it is so much admirable. Yes. Whose responsibility do you think is it to be? Should it also be added to the hard skills in there, or you, the student, the bread, should mm. now take that upon yourself <laughs> and look and see more good for yourself? <laughs> yes. Is the responsibility of the school. Nevertheless, it is my responsibility too. I want to divert from this and consider what he said. He said in a, in a school that I won't mention the name, they would want to know what you did at the uh, internship site. Yeah. But in a school that I also know, you go and do internship, bring the result. They didn't call to check whether you did it. They didn't call to check whether you, you closed at the appropriate time. Hmm. All they know is the report. And this is more supervision. So I come out boasting of a grade that you just gave me, but not at an yes. element in me. And people come out from university and they don't have diligence to work. Yes. They, don't, they don't have the hard working skills. Mm. They are not perseverance. There is no perseverance. And those are soft skills. You those are soft skills. So if you tell me that if I do a business and there is a, a, a slight collapse, I should still persevere. I have not met the issue. And you don't know when I, when I meet the issue, you don't know when I'll run away, I'll still face the issue. So I, 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 I side with him to get people to come there and talk to us that, oh, when I build my business, it collapsed four times and I persevered and yet here I am. We don't get that in some of the institutions that we, we, we find ourselves in. So answer so the say. question. Who nurtures soft skills? <laughs> the university, the students, or it's natural? 70 from the university, 30 from the students. You have to, you have to dive deep into that. <laughs> Practically. How does it happen? Because he think uh, the doc is a grad to teach uh, research methods Good. and how to do it according to the lecture slides. So your you you being ethical, you being diligent, you being hardworking, you being obedient, humble, respectful. Those virtues are not actually part of his uh, per, objective. Per the curriculum, is it in? It is not to teach the student to be diligent. No. Why? <laughs> is it not needed in the job market? It is. So why is it not part of the curriculum? <laughs> so. If I'm rich and I don't need to be diligent because my father has this company, I don't need that hard work, and then what, what do I gain? So it should be part of the curriculum to make students diligent, hard working, perseverant, 
Uh, we'll come them. back to dog and ask him if that's possible. <laughs> uh, yes, but please. still, 70 30. Okay, all right. You, if, if advanced, you change there. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you very much. You see, we all heard of the National and Science Quiz, quiz. right? And there was an instance that the winners yes. for the National and Science Quiz, and science National, quiz yeah. yeah, Mass and Science Quiz, they happened to go outside the country sure. to partake in a, a, national, glo a, global, global, yeah. a global challenge. They couldn't take part in the competition. Why? Is it because they don't have the theory? No, they have the theory. Yes. They've learned everything. They've learned the chemicals. They know the reactions. They know the names of the instruments and any other thing. Yes. But they cannot come out with something tangible. You see, we are talking about tangibility here. Yes. Like you bringing whatever you've learned, making it practical, bringing something. Yes. Yeah, materializing it. That's what we are talking about here. Now we ask ourselves, is it the fault of these students mm -hmm. or the fault of our education or like academia curricula? You get it? So the way it is structured, I think we have to have a rethink through it. We have to readjust things, you get it, to meet our demands. Because it's not helping. At the end of my university, I want to come out, meet challenges and solve them. I want to be equipped so that the one who didn't come to the university, who is working in the business sector, growing something small. For instance, you can take the trotro drivers. I, I encountered some of them, and I got to realize that a day he was making a, a profit of 250 Ghana cities. A day as a profit. Yeah. Now you can calculate that a month. How this person a driver is receiving a month. Now, after university, I'm always thinking of sitting at the office, getting something like 700 a month. But you see, our culture and the way we ourselves perceive things are not even helping us. Yeah. So I think there should be, um, we, we, have to, we have to break through this societal psychological barrier yeah. before we can even fit into. You get it? I want an education system whereby mm -hmm. I come out, mm -hmm. I'll be equipped to enter the job market and do something for myself and build something stronger. You get it? For my packet, for the, for the nation, for the country, do That's something. Amazing. You get it? I shouldn't always come and rely on the government. I shouldn't come and all, all that I'll be thinking is the unemployment association or whatever. You get it? This is what I want. Look, that's why you are here. I think that <laughs> these shots are to you. Look, how, first of all, are we feeling that in the lecture hall, we are being given that practical touch? He mentioned it. Is that ever realized in the lecture room? Um, thank you. I think, I won't say 100% yes, we are feeling. I believe we still have others that are looking through in this kind of uh, engagement. Rather, because in the lecture hall, it is a structured system. Okay. There must be a conscious effort on the part of the students okay. to avail themselves with other opportunities that surround them. Okay. Sometimes they see it well, but because of comfortability, they want to rest, have some comfort. They deny themselves, they deny advantage of those opportunities that comes their way. Okay. So I will encourage them to look beyond the curriculum. Okay, because the curriculum is a strategy program. So they should look beyond. And uh, to the advantage, what to make them more competitive is not what their curriculum dictates, okay. but what is outside their curriculum. Hmm. When they meet their competitors, that makes them superstar. Hmm but not solely what their curriculum give them. When the employer is going to take them, given the fact that all of you have first degree, BS accounting, or BA business administration, that one is a foundation you have, or a footing. What is next? What makes you superstar? Is the other things they were able to acquire, why they were on campus, why you were sleeping, that makes the person a superstar. So look, you, you can't say that. The baker will bake, but how the bread will get, get more itself selling on the <laughs> shelf? Is, is that the issue? Is that supposed to be the, the issue here? No, that is 
not how the bread sells, they say, but the value addition, the value addition to the bread, that makes it uniquely different from other breads. Bread. Hmm. That is, so, so it means that it, it can work that we will teach soft skills. That is what industry wants. Because everybody can pass through, we can train you to understand basic accounting hmm. according to how we do it in our company. Good. Sure. But we can't teach you how to be honest. We can't teach you how to be hardworking, diligent, or eloquent. That value is your job to acquire. Okay. We can teach you. Let me correct that. We can teach you. Do you know why? That is why every work you present, we check it with plagiarism test. Okay. The hardness test begins from there. Okay. Okay. When we give you an assignment and we say submit it at this time, we are teaching you how to meet deadline okay. when you go out. When we say if you report for a letter late, go out, don't come in, we are teaching you how to report to work earlier and don't go to work late. So indirectly, but because we have not formalized this kind of soft skill giving, they don't obey it. So I will decide, if you like, come late. Because I'm not awarding grades. Students will comply if there's reward. If you award grade for the one who comes to later first. Yeah. If you award grade for the one who does this, that one they will do it. But sure. later did they know that those are the things that make them superstar because you refuse to add reward to it. He dies out. I believe if what you're saying is not part of the curriculum, why can't we make it a traditional curriculum where we have these things taught? Yes. <laughs> it's not possible. It's, it's, it's true. Public speaking. Yes. And all these things. It's because um, I, I have heard that at the um, at the university in Ghana, yeah. product development. Yes. Which is supposed to be an, a component of the answer metrics in marketing management. Marketing. It's actually a program that is encouraged the students to now add value to existing products sure. and sure. <laughs> um, uh, exhibit it yes. for industry to see. Yes. And what do you think will be the will be the outcome? It will be the preferred choice of, 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 of a police because we see that they are actually doing what we like. Yes. So Doc, <laughs> why are we, we doing such things? Um, Making it, a, I mean, a, a continental thing because we did it. Um, I will call for the academia to continuously upgrade okay. <laughs> the curriculum Good. to meet industry demand. Industry becoming dynamic. And if we are training people to fit into that industry, then continuously we should be upgrading our curriculum to give that relevant and requisite skills to be able to fit into the ever changing industry demand. And that, unfortunately, most universities have not been able to do that. They still maintain their old course, course contents, teaching 10 years ago things <laughs> in the 21st century, which is technology driven. Okay. What again they can do is that they should strike collaborations with bigger universities outside. The, the South, South, Southwest Corporation should come in so that they can read to the academic staff to relevant and up to date skills in teaching methodologies, in research, in teaching. Teaching is a whole kind of game. You don't just work in the classroom and say you are going to teach. You have to plan it. It is, it is just like a, a, your mission. Okay. And as you go in, you have something to achieve. You think from the beginning of the lecture to the end of the lecture. There is something that if you never achieve, you shouldn't be happy as a teacher. You have to achieve something that is achieve something, not just completing the topic for discussion, but make sure that your students, your students who are the consumers of your product are satisfied. That, oh, today, just like the, the congregation will say, that's what today's church says, I love it. It means that you've got something. Can our students also say, that's for today's lecture, mm -hmm. I love it. Cool, I, yes. feel, I feel okay. Can they say that? <laughs> if they can say that, I mean that you imparted something. But if they say, ah, for this one, I didn't get it. Ah, for this one, I didn't get it. <laughs> it means that something, something is wrong somewhere. They didn't get something. Sure. It is your job to make them get it. <laughs> Even though they have a part of it, it is your job sure. to make them get it. So we should continue to be to collaborate more with other big, smaller universities to collaborate more with other big universities who are well resourced with practical, uh, practice-based 
and teaching methodologies and the resources. In that way, we can be able to produce graduates that fit into what industry what industry will not and also the industry to collaborate Good. more bring their needs to the academia and let's sit down together and structure and structure some of the of the programs tailor made to solve those industry problems and please also sponsor sponsor graduate talented and brilliant graduates okay. into that kind of entrepreneurship and Ajiman, yes you also forget the fact that the industry community has gone through some revolutionary processes from the industrial to the economic recession and even now that the internet world you get it now the industry is not looking for leaders they are looking for ideas people who can think put food on the table who can maneuver their way through you get it these are what the people need and now I think that we are grooming so much leaders, forgetting about people with dark ideas. But we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't need leaders. We need much ideas because leaders will come and go, but ideas will remain the same. A simple idea can move the nation. A simple idea can change Ghana, can move Ghana on. You get it? So we should look at this well and see how the academia will lease with what the industry to bring something tangible so that we will all enjoy so a comment just dropped in okay and this comment is, is saying that recently a lecturer was uh, at gij was sacked sacked the students from the lecture hall for being late and later on um he was criticized on the radio that um why did he have to do that sack some of a lecture hall and I want to ask, how does society also contribute to this same mm. soft skill impartation? Because we are looking at people who, are, who adhere to time, people who respect order, who believe in deadlines, because that's what industry wants. And that is, what, this is how practical some money is somewhere, and he was penalized nationally for doing that. Doc, from your view? That's a challenge, if it is. But um, uh, I see that a challenge that can overcome. If we want to grow, okay. we must allow the systems to work. To work. No nation can develop without being having a disciplined workforce. Otherwise, anybody can at all can wake up and come to work anytime you see lights. It goes anytime you see light. So um, society will talk, but I will still say that that lecturer should continue to do his job. Today, that student may not see the value of this until he got a job, he was late for work, he was sacked or dismissed, and he loses that job. He never got a job again and became unemployed okay. and has a family to manage before he will see that I lost something valuable. The day that lecturer sacked me, if I repented and changed my life, I wouldn't have gone down. But Doc, supposing he did not sack the, like, the student out, but rather advise the student that you can't take this to the job market, would he not have solved the same issue here? Because sacking the student makes the student lose the lecture period, lose the knowledge he was coming to gain, and lose his money. Money. Okay, let me come here. At the beginning of every lecture, mm -hmm. there is an introduction of the course content. And yes. the policies govern the delivery of the course. Exactly. Which all stakeholders, the student, the lecture must have a so, we, yeah. so that has been set right from the word go. Sure. So is there any other platform? <laughs> because when I, I'm coming for the lecture, I have three hours, two hours to deliver. I don't need to go back because that is not part of the today's discussion. Today's discussion about commitment. Commitment means that come early and let's start. Yes. If you came late, is it part of the commitment? It's not part of it means that you are sabotaging my letter. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is key. So you see, so now as, as if students are not allowing themselves to be given a soft skill. <laughs> is that why it's not being cut upon? Because that's what industry needs. <laughs> and, and they need that. And we are trying to put the, the, the primary hard skill there, mm -hmm. but we still find ways and means to put into you or imbibe into you the soft skill. But society doesn't allow them to do their job. 
or say, no. do you agree with this? I don't agree. Is it because you're a student or not? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm a service person now. No. Yeah, yeah, but you are still, still extreme, because that, that's sure. a different level. But you yes, see, you yes, see yes. Um, with this, I think we should also look at the whole situation, the environment, how this occurred, okay, okay, you get it? And I'm also seeing an academia curricula whereby even the lecturers will be evaluated at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Good. Because is it always the case that the lecturers are right? No. no. That's not always the case. Sometimes it can, it can be due to their um, is it a unprofessional ways of conduct or something that led to this situation. So we have to look into it and see that if the lecturers too can be evaluated at the end of the semester so that we will see the good lecturers, the bad ones, and something will be done about it. So this one is a 50-50 so, so if, if you were late for a lecture and lecture sagged you, would you actually pick it to be a learning process for your, for your soft skill build up? Yes. Or you think it is worth uh, protesting upon? If the lecturer is grooming me to become a leader, then I'll accept that. Because right. you, you are a potential leader, because of course. leadership is a military way. Good. Therefore, I have to be trained in that way mm. or manner. But if he is training me to be an idealist, to be an idealist, to come out with great ideas, I think those things don't matter. Mm. Okay. okay. There has to be an alternative way okay. to manage it. Okay. Right. So, well, let's just come to you. I think you guys are really <laughs> ganging up. I should have brought another <laughs> dog to add up to him. Anyway, so what is your view? Let's pick the, 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 the final view. What is your view? What do you think is the way forward for academia and industry? Who has more work to do to appease to the other? Okay, I will lay everything on the shoulders of the academia mm -hmm. that the curriculum should be traditionally based. Traditional based? Yes, give us curriculum that reflects to the job market that we are willing to go and work in. Don't give me a curriculum that I would have to travel overseas to see that job on the floor. <laughs> I need to see a curriculum that outside the walls of the school, there is a work for me there, and they, are, they will appreciate my effort. So that's my advice for the character. To add up to what my brother said, you see, even today in Africa, there are about seven different ways of generating electricity in the whole world. Ghana, we have not even perfected one. Hmm. This is serious. This is very serious. Do we have the workforce? Yes. So for me, I think, apart from issuing certificates to, to the industry or to the public or to individuals to come out, I also think they also have another aspect, that is the research aspect, is to reach the research into the industry, to the work. For instance, recently we got to realize that there is a new research that they conducted about the appendix. Mm -hmm. At first, they said appendix was part of the five useless organs in the human body. So mm -hmm. people ended up getting their appendix off. Recently, there's a new research that the appendix is what is useful, that other ba useful bacteria that are needed for the body are what's stored in the appendix. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. you, you, you've seen the numerous people who were operated, all these who are taking the appendix away. So you see the importance of research. Sure. Now, this research, scientific research, maybe you've not heard of it, is with the academia. Does it have to come out for the industry to feed or to consume? Because they are paying for the research. The academia comes for grants, they, they go for grants, you know, here and there, they, they bring out the research. And even now, publishing companies are making profits of this research. You get yes. it? So I think there has to be a means or ways and with this research, we will get to what? The, the final consumer, which is the industry, in a simpler form. And I'm seeing something like NASA, Google Scholar. Now I have an app, Google Scholar, I can go, and then uh, they are making things easy. We are moving faster. Yeah. You get it? At first, internet was so good. Now, <laughs> internet is something else. Never like you get that. it? So I think they have to also look at that aspect also, so that those who are paying for the research will also have to consume it. Look, there's a whole lot that you have to talk about. <laughs> and it lies between who has more work to do, academia or industry. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, because I'm coming from academia. Yeah. I will speak for the academia. Okay. And I also speak for the industry. Also. Okay. The academia is more like now a learning factory. Supposed to produce consumable goods by the industry. Yeah. So academia equally has a significant role to play. Sure. Yeah. Coming out with products that will be industry driven. Wow. On the market. That can wow. happen if there is a productive relationship between the industry and the academia. Industry must be able to move to the academic environment and sit down with them and discuss what their problem is. Industry has a problem, but sometimes they may not have the solution to solving that problem. The academia may have the solution. Even if they don't have, they know where to pass to generate the solution, but they don't have the problem. Yeah. So there should be that kind of exchange, transferability of knowledge from the academia to the industry, through the trained skilled workforce, that should be able to solve that. So there should be that kind of a productive collaboration between the industry and the academia. Industry should be able to set up boot camps or small, small laboratories where they can visit frequently interact with students, and then impart the practicalities of what the job market is, or discuss with students the current trends on the job market. Students so will compare to what they are being taught. Are we on course? <laughs> or we are just, as he said, whatever you are learning today, you are five years way back <laughs> compared to your competitors ahead. So industry has a lot to do. Academia has equally a lot to do. The regulator, importantly, has a lot to do. Because they have to check and make sure that academia is delivering relevant courses, courses that are meeting industry demand. They have to check and perhaps maybe give a timeline that for every program you develop, for every two years, there must be a review of the content. Which will compare every academic to consciously look for mm. a way of upgrading their course. Otherwise, we shall all sit down. <laughs> all that will say that, okay, this program has prices in this five years. We'll go for reaccreditation. No, but that should not be enough. If you're coming for reaccreditation, we want to see new things you are adding on to the old one. We will not accredit, we accredit the old one. We want to see what is new that you are bringing on, which is industry driven. Sure. And based upon that, you are credit your program to you. Because that is what the market is going. Even if you say, okay, this program is not relevant anymore, the dynamics is this, okay, bring on the new one. So the regulator plays a role. The academic uh, factory, learning factories also play a role. And the student themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, 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 sure. Okay, there. You, you. I know. I believe you've enjoyed the discussion to the fullest, and it doesn't end here. I mean, issues about industry, academia, is everybody's matter. From parents to industry players to students to academia lecturers, everybody has a role to play uh, effectively to get us moving to where we're moving. So, thanks for watching. African Student Voices, uh, it was me and then that James Doku and was uh, Chidako Sapon and then sure. Kofi Wasayabwa. It's been a great discussion. Uh, we, we promise that we won't end here. <laughs> we will try and also have another session tell you much more deeper because you're interested. We want to get the African continent growing gradually. Okay. So keep your comments coming, keep your likes coming, and then send out your questions. We'll address them squarely. I was your host, Ajima Chidako, and this is African Student Voices. Keep watching AUTV and... Until next time, say bye to you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.